A cold and lonely night in Agrabah. Loneliness had become an unwelcome companion in the frigid winter nights of Agrabah. The days were still warm, but the desert cold swept through the palace with a viciousness that reminded Jasmine of Vizier Jafar's smile. Ex-Vizier, she reminded herself. He was a genie now, powerless and buried hundreds of feet under the desert sand in his own cave of wonders, where she hoped he would stay for the next ten thousand years. She sighed and wrapped her woolen cloak tighter about her, looking out over the town where she had first ventured to find the man of her dreams, her beloved Aladdin. With the passing of her father, however, he had been named Sultan of Agrabah, and one of the consequences of his coronation was the slew of invitations to visit other sultanates and confirm his position among them. Not that there was any chance of war. Agrabah was a comfortable city that served its people well. Once, it had been an incredibly busy trading city along the profitable Mer Road, but the valley to the north had not seen rain in many years and the city that had vanished into the encroaching desert, taking the Mer Road with it. Agrabah's charm along the Mer Road had been its powerful spring that fed their agriculture and kept them alive. Smaller now, poorer in riches but richer in spirit, Agrabah had become one of the most beautiful and self-sufficient sultanates in all of Allah's lands, but it possessed little that would lead another warlord against it. Her hands were freezing as she leaned against the painted stone railing. She decided to go inside, closing the ornate door behind her and crossing the cold tiles to the fireplace, stoking it up to great warmth. Behind her she heard a soft shuffle as someone pushed aside one of the heavy winter tapestries that held warmth in her room from fleeing to the rest of the chilly palace. A low rumble told her who her companion was, especially when he pressed his cold nose against the back of her neck. She turned around and grabbed the large tiger's head in a soft and friendly hug. Oh, Raja, she sighed softly. He's been gone so long. Mrul, Raju agreed. He walked around to sit next to her before the warm fireplace, curling up around her. A magnificently muscled tiger, Jasmine often wondered if Raja was entirely tiger since his stomach and rump looked more like that of a cheetah or other running animal. My rum? I know, he'll be back soon, she smiled. He took carpet and Abu with him, too. With father gone. It's just me and you here now. None of the servants really understand. He means the world to me, Raja. You know that. I wish I had more people who really knew how I felt. It almost makes me wish the Argo was around. Trumpf, Raja snorted at the mention of the accursed parrot's name. I know. He was as evil as his master Jafar, but at least when I talked to him he understood what I was talking about. She sighed. I'm talking nonsense. Of course I don't wish either of them back. I'm glad they're gone for as long as we shall all live. She crossed the high ceiling room and crawled into her bed, too much bed for just one person alone. Raja walked over to where his sheepskin rug lay and pulled it in front of the fire with his teeth, determined to stay warm while he got some sleep. Jasmine lay in bed, trying to remember the feel of her beloved Ali's body next to her own, his warming breath and his smooth skin sliding against hers. In her imagination he was just out of her reach. She could barely reach out and touch the ends of his silken hair. She had been so glad when he had given up wearing that stupid white headpiece with the feather. His hair was one of his most beauteous features. Her hands ran slid under the heavy linen bedding to touch her belly, and she could remember the way his hands felt there, touching her, caressing her softness. It wasn't at all like his. His skin always felt smooth and dry, but underneath his stomach had been tight, strong. As were his limbs. She remembered their wedding night, when she had been so frightened. He hadn't been much better. But after the initial pain, when he had entered her, she had looked up into his worried face and held his powerful arms with her hands and told him she would be okay. 
He had smiled and they had made love as man and wife should. The happiness she had felt at their joining her caused her to cry afterwards for a long time. And he had been so worried. Her fingers stroked up along her ribcage and over her breasts. She gasped softly as her own hands made small tremors of pleasure run up her spine. When he touched her breasts, he was always so gentle. And his eyes, they were always so full of mischief and happiness. Sometimes he was just like a child exploring a newly beloved toy. As her fingers caressed the dark skin along her collarbone and slid back down the sides of her body, she wondered if she were ever any better. She knew that seeing him naked for the first time had shocked her. She hadn't been prepared for the size of his sex, completely convinced that it would never fit within her own. Yet it had. Her hands passed over her hips and felt the soft wisp of hair between her thighs. The sensation of him within her had told her everything she needed to know about being a woman. And being Aladdin's. The boyish grin of his made her melt with need. She spread her legs a little wider as her fingers slid down over her nether lips to caress between her thighs. She gasped to think of him, of the exploring they had done. He had always been so... naive. Yes, it had been on her initiative, to make love in places other than just the palace bedroom and in positions other than the obvious. But always for her the best was just to watch his face as he thrust himself within her, to feel his body atop hers and his sex within hers. As she felt her fingers touching within her own wetness, she dreamed of his kisses on her lips, her throat, her breasts. Oh, she missed him. Her body missed him. Her fingers went deeper inside herself as she tried to find the little clues that would bring him back to her completely. Oh, Aladdin. She gasped as a wave of pleasure broke over her. She settled back onto the bed. The needs of her body were a little quieter now, but she knew she could never be fully satisfied until her Prince Aladdin was in her arms again. She felt desire still, desire to dream of him again, to caress herself again. He had better return soon. Mro? Raja's voice asked from across the room. I'm just talking to myself, Raja. Missing my prince. Jasmine heard Raja shift his massive bulk as he stood up. The tiger's body was silhouetted perfectly in the fireplace, and Jasmine found herself again admiring the giant tiger's beauty. Her first and still best friend, Raja had always been there for her when she needed someone to cry with or to play with. He crossed the room and hopped up onto the bed. Raja. She gasped. You know this bed isn't strong enough to hold you. Roll, Raja replied softly, nuzzling her neck with his nose. She stroked his neck softly. You're so good to me, Raja. You're right. I don't care if the bed breaks. Raja curled up next to her, separated by the covers. Oh, you silly tiger. Come down here inside and join me. You'll freeze out there away from the fire. Nro? Come on, Jasmine insisted, holding the covers up. Raja shifted as she directed and she tossed the covers over him. She shifted next to him, taking advantage of his warmth. As always, she was immediately impressed with his strength, but in some ways she was also attentive to his strength, not at all unlike Aladdin's. With Aladdin gone, her desire often rose to uncontrollable heights, and Raja's presence drove so many memories within her that, despite her earlier dreaming she knew she wanted such caresses once again, even her own. Practical to a fault, Jasmine slid away from Raja, trying to keep her desires suppressed. She was not ashamed of her needs, to her they were signs of her love for Aladdin. She had not had them before she met the prince her dreams had waited on. But she had no desire to disturb her lifelong tiger friend. She knew that often her caresses encouraged her to shift in bed and to make soft noises. But her body would not be denied. 
Her hands found their way along the soft curves of her body, and as she had known small whimpers escaped from her lips no matter how hard she tried to keep quiet. Her passion arose within her again, and her body trembled gently. Raja shifted in his sleep, one of his rear paws pressed against her ankle, and to her surprise a small thrill of mischievousness, much like the one that had originally led her to meeting Aladdin, rang within her soul. She turned her head to look at her tiger friend, and was shocked to find him looking at her. His head cocked slightly to the left and a gentle and friendly smile on his face. Raja lowered his head and pressed his cool nose against her neck, lowering slowly down until his rough tongue was pressing against her hardening nipple. Raja! She gasped. Ruh. The tiger replied softly, looking up with one eye open. What? Oh! She sat up suddenly in bed, giving him another hug, wrapping her arms around his thick neck. You're just being a good friend while Aladdin is gone, is that it? Murn, Raja replied, his head bouncing slightly. Well, I guess it's all right, she replied. You've always been my best friend. She lay back in bed and continued to stroke her body. Raja softly nursed at one nipple, and she caressed the other before sliding her hands down between her parted thighs and playing with her warm sex. Oh, Raja, I miss him so, she gasped as her slender fingers caressed that one place that gave her such pleasure. Her hands worked faster, but Raja had a different idea. The scent of her sex attracted his nose, and he nudged her fingers out of the way as she caressed herself. Raja? What are you doing? As an answer, Raja's tongue struck out and slid along the length of her sex. Jasmine gasped softly. Raja. A soft growl grew in his throat, a soft purring sound as he pressed his head between her legs, licking at her sex. Yes, she moaned softly. Oh, Raja, please. She begged as the familiar rise in pleasure swept through her like a summer sandstorm. Yes, she sighed once more, reaching down to stroke Raja's head and push him away. That's enough, Raja. Oh, you wonderful tiger, you. She reached up and pushed him over. More accurately, he fell over and let her hug him tightly. Thank you, Raja, she sighed, kissing her friend under the muscle and scratching at his ears. She felt something bat against her leg and looked down. Raja's sex was extended to full length and she realized that he must have been excited by her writhing and her climax. Raja, have you ever mated? She asked suddenly. MMMRRRR. The tiger shook his head sadly. Would you like me to find someone for you? E the tiger looked at her, confused for a second. Mara, he replied after a moment, pressing his nose to hers. Yes. I know you have me, Raja. That's not what I meant. I'm not your mate. I'm not a tiger. Mara? So what? She repeated, angrily. You've been my best friend for so very long, Raja. I am the princess. You deserve everything a princess can do for you. Mara? Of course I do that for you. She replied, smiling. I love you. You silly tiger. She slid over, and again her leg pressed against his hardness. In the meantime, let me give you what you did for me, she continued, sliding down his body. She was pleased to see that Raja's sex wasn't in proportion to the rest of his body. In fact, it was smaller than her precious Aladdin's. She slowly wrapped her slim fingers around it and began stroking him slowly. A loud purr rumbled through Raja as her hand began stroking him firmly. She smiled at to look at him pawing the air absently, his head and shoulders pressed back against the bed. Raja? She asked softly. You used your mouth, didn't you? She slowly lowered her head to his sex and kissed the tip of it gently. It tasted odd, 
a little strong but also pleasant, like wrapped fig leaves dipped in peppers. She opened her mouth and took it in, tasting it for the first time. Raja growled loudly in appreciation. Jasmine slowly suckled Raja's mildness, feeling his body grow tense. She tried to continue, but her jaw tired quickly and she returned to using her hands, stroking his sex and playing with his testicles gently, squeezing and coaxing. Raja erupted with a roar, a thick white stream of fluid almost spraying out across his stomach. Raja. She gasped, recognizing the explosion for what it was. Mriai, he replied softly. That's all right, she said stroking his chest with her hand. I hope you feel better now. Raja just nodded. After they were cleaned up, Jasmine again lay in bed and Raja retired back to his bedding by the fire. She curled up and went back to sleep. Dawn was creeping back into her windows. The air still cold with the night's chill when she felt a hand upon her shoulder. Jasmine? Jasmine? She turned over. Aladdin! She cried, pulling him down to the bed with her. Despite all of the pleasures of the night before, nothing fulfilled her as much as his presence. I missed you so much. And I missed you, my princess, he replied. She could feel his hardness growing between his legs pressing against her. Her sex became wet almost instantly, she felt her need become strong again. She needed to be filled with him, with her Aladdin. Please, she moaned, looking up at him, Aladdin, take me. My pleasure, my princess, he replied, tearing his tunic off and tossing it aside. They tumbled down onto the sheets again, covering themselves up against the cool morning. His body lighted her passions, and his need after having been away so long was powerful and immense. She parted her thighs, he drove his sex into her, filling her and the making her his. She looked up into his eyes, his softly brown face with those glorious pools of blue liquid eyes. He smiled down at her. I missed you, Jasmine. And I missed you, Aladdin. Oh, yes. She gasped as he pressed down fully. Their intimacies grew more passionate, his body thrusting against hers, her legs wrapped around his hips and holding him within her. Never let me go, Aladdin. I won't, Jasmine, I promise. I trust you, beloved, she whimpered as he thrust urgently against her. I. I know, he gasped his body shuddering in ecstasy as he climaxed within her, and her body responded with waves of pleasure of her own. Oh, Jasmine. After a while, as they lay together under the sheets, Jasmine whispered, Ali? Yes, beloved? Don't be angry with me, beloved, but I pleasured myself while dreaming of you while you were gone. Aladdin smiled. Why should I be angry, Jasmine? I know you love me. If you wanted pleasure while dreaming of me, that only shows how you love me. She hugged him tightly. Thank you, my prince. He sighed and held his wife closely. You're welcome, my princess.